Hey guys, welcome back, welcome back. John Megacycle here. I wanted to take a couple of minutes out of my recording schedule with RTSs, and I actually wanted to do an introduction episode. This is my attempt at doing an introduction to the RTS genre. I'm going to take this all super slow. We're not going to go real fast with advanced tactics. I just wanted to introduce this game as if you were coming to RTS with absolutely fresh eyes. We're doing this as Command & Conquer 3 Tiberium Wars. We're not doing expansions. We're not doing any fancy stuff. No mods. No nothing. This is Ground Zero Command & Conquer style gameplay. Now before we get started way too far, there's a couple of game acronyms I wanted to cover. I know I'm going to be throwing a bunch of, you know, three-letter acronyms around, and I'm just used to hearing them, but I know for someone coming to the genre fresh and really trying to get the grips on how this all works, I wanted to make sure that we took a couple of seconds and explained the kind of verbiage I'm going to be throwing around. I only think it's fair, and I could take a few seconds to make sure we get everyone on the same page. The first thing that I really want to cover is the difference between a turn-based strategy game and a real-time strategy game. This acronym is usually called RTS for real-time strategy. What that really means is in an RTS is everyone's taking their turn at the same time. This is going to be significantly different from most board games. Board games, one person takes a turn, then another person takes a turn. Think of it like chess. Chess is a really good example of a turn-based, non-real-time game. The white player takes a turn, the white pieces move, and then the black pieces move. And then the white, and the black, and they alternate until the game completes. Now back to a real-time strategy game, everyone's playing at the same time. There's no pausing, there's no interrupting, there's no, oh hang on, I have to take my turn. Everyone's going at the same time. That's real-time strategy. A good example of the real-time strategy game are the Command & Conquer series, which covers Red Alert and Dune series. These are the games I'm going to be mentioning in the Command & Conquer franchise. And other really popular games are known as StarCraft, there is a series there, and then also games called Active War and Active Aggression. These are commonly known titles of real-time strategy games, so if you wanted to do some exploring, these are a couple titles I'd recommend. There are hundreds of real-time strategy games out there, and each one is different. So I'd recommend you take a look around, see what's out there, but I just want to make sure that we got this bit of understanding before I go crazy starting to play the actual game, and then I might get you lost in translation. Now, I started originally with Command & Conquer and Dune 2 and a company called Westwood Studios. They've been bought out by EA, who now owns the Command & Conquer franchise. Either way, Command & Conquer 3 is one with good gameplay, it's fairly balanced. I enjoy it a lot. It's a game I come back to with the add-ons and expansions and all that fun stuff, but I thought this would be a good opportunity to show you a base idea of how RTS works and flows. Okay? Most current RTSs usually have some sort of a tutorial, a campaign, which is playing one of the two or three or four sides, depending on how many factions are in the game, a skirmish mode, think of it like an exhibition match. It doesn't really count. You're just trying to kick the tires and have some fun. A multiplayer mode, where there's usually a matchmaking component where you can meet other players of a, a similar skill set. Profiles aren't common in all RTSs. This is just if you wanted to see your own personal stats. Here I'm Active Profile Commander Megacycle, no big deal. This is the first time in a long time I'm playing Command & Conquer 3. This also has a stats component. I don't have anything here because I always play the add-on. Okay, pretty straightforward. Aside from that, these also come with options where you can set up visual control settings, audio settings, and then of course see the credits of the people that made the game. That's not important right now. What's really important is I wanted to show you how RTS componentry really works with a skirmish. Okay? We're going to go ahead and do a new skirmish. This might be a little complex, so I'll explain this as I go. Commander Megacycle is my name. Uh, each of these are designated by a map with how the battlefield parameters are set up. There's usually a name how many players the map is built for, usually a mini-map. This is, this is a brief view of what the battlefield will look like, and usually designated start positions. So player one will start here, player two starts here. Most of these maps are very evenly balanced. There's some odd maps like three-player or five-player maps, and they can be a little one-sided in construction, but usually these one-on-one -on -one maps are fairly evened out. As you go through, larger maps allow for more players with more start locations and such. Command & Conquer 3 allows for 8 maximum players. 
those players can be put on separate teams or it can be a free-for-all. So think of it like dodgeball. You can have an eight-player map like this with two teams of four or four teams of two or everyone versus everyone, which is a free-for-all that I mentioned earlier. For this little bit of a matchup, we're just going to pick a map that I'm usually used to, and it's you've seen in several of my videos if you have seen them, Pipeline Problems is a very linear, straightforward map. Okay? This game has a list of players on the left, which the battlements, or the armies that are going to be contending in today's match. I'm going as myself, and this is on a row-by-row row setup. So Mega Cycle, Side, Global Defense Initiative, or GDI in this case. There are several other sides, in this case Nod, or the Brotherhood of Nod, and the Skrin. And I'll explain the details of those in a second. Um, if you're playing against an AI or an artificial intelligence, in this game they have a personality, and we'll go over that in a minute. Teams, this is where I said you could set up up to four separate teams. Um, I'm just going to be by myself, so it doesn't matter what team I'm on. The color of your army, and in Command & Conquer 3 you're allowed a handicap you can have a certain amount of penalty applied to you and this goes for like unit strength it could also mean economy each game is different for command and conquer 3 this really just means your units battle effectiveness we're gonna go zero handicap we could put a negative handicap on our opponent if we want and that's this next row player difficulty when you're talking about an AI or artificial intelligence again is usually broken down by a couple of adjectives in this case it's a level of difficulty easy medium hard and brutal in this case easy medium and hard receive no additional benefits the only real difference is their AI capability how often they attack how strongly they defend the kind of units they will build the kind of economy they will construct that sort of a thing Brutal is a cheating AI, which means it has the finest artificial intelligence the game will provide and they will get a resource bonus. Now, some other games might just call it flat out and say it's a cheater or that sort of a thing. But for this case, like I said, I just want to go through basics. We're going to go up against an easy. To make sure that we make this no more difficult in incorporating several sides, we're going to go up also against a global defense initiative. The AI personality here is broken down by their own tactics. I've done videos on these before, but we can do a quick one on this. Random, uh, pretty self-explanatory, it'll just pick one at random. Balance means it'll gauge attacking and defending and economy building evenly. It won't be one-sided in any of those. It's supposed to be a fairly fluid player able to defend itself competently as well as attack. A rusher will build a quick force and strike quickly they will not emphasize defense as heavily as the other AI types. A turtle on the opposite side of that will not attack immediately. They'll take their time building up their defenses, building up a larger force. Gorilla, if you're familiar with guerrilla tactics in some wars, that's exactly what that is. They'll attack with a diverse army, maybe some aircraft and then some land units, and then aircraft again, maybe a super weapon. They'll try to mix it up as much as possible. And a steamroller will wait, build a very large force. Not so much emphasis on defense, but will aim on a larger force. So really these all break down to timing, okay? I know I've been talking a lot on how this all works, but I want to make sure you don't get overwhelmed right away. For this intro video, we're just going to do a balanced, okay, fair. Um, I'm going to change their color. I like for my Global Defense Initiative to be a yellow. That's the Global Defense Initiative's normal color from the very first Command & Conquer game to the second one and to this one, okay? We're not going to apply a handicap on them. This is just going to be a fairly straightforward match, okay? I'm going to go ahead and set my start position here. Their start position I don't have to define, it's fairly self-explanatory. There's only two players, I'm player one based on the first row, they're player two, but we'll do it anyhow. The real idea of a RTS game is to destroy your opponent. Now, depending on the RTS game you're playing, that can mean different things. For the Command & Conquer series, it really means building an army and throwing it at the enemy, <laughs> realistically. I mean, you're, you're in a state of war. And based on the team designation, we're not on the same team. If we were, we would be allies in this situation. But we're not. We're not on a team. There's no alliances. They're not on our side. They are our enemies. And actually, to make it a little easier, we'll make them red. Red is usually the color of the Brotherhood of Nod, but that's not important. 
the main thing is we have with this RTS a few sides or factions or races depending on what they're called each side has its own technology its own vehicles its own way to produce money in some cases that sort of a thing okay hope I haven't lost you so far I know we're taking a bit of time here but like I said I'd rather take this slow now the very last piece of this is sometimes the games can be incorporated with additional rules changing the game speed your initial resources with how much money you get to start the game with and in this case the command and conquer series has had something called random crates they're little crates that pop up on the battlefield if you touch them you can get resources your units can become more skilled it's just a random idea you know it's a random item throw in in other games you get free super weapons or your units might die so it's a gamble if you want to pick them up we're not going to modify anything just click that default button a few times make sure we didn't touch anything and I think we're ready for battle uh, without further ado here we go now now in the command and conquer world we have one major component this green stuff growing out of the ground is known as Tiberium Tiberium is a very energy mineral rich crystal it's toxic to humans but its value when processed is amazing they explain the real genealogy and bio of this in the first command and conquer game it's an amazing mineral but it's deadly so in order to really get this resource harvested and processed we need to build a refinery now when we start the match off we start with this vehicle structure sort of a thing it's called an MCV actually what it can also come out with as this this is our mobile construction vehicle and this is very iconic for roll. all command and conquer games when deployed it turns into a construction yard now what we see immediately let's pick apart the battlements pretty quick on the very upper right we have a sell mode if we want to sell a structure for some of its value back if we built the structure in the wrong spot or we don't need it a power mode which we'll talk about later and a repair mode to make sure we can keep our structures fully repaired if they're damaged moving down here we have our mini map the same way we saw before when we started the battle over here we have several tabs we have a construction production structure tab a support structure tab and other tabs will become available as we build more structures as with most RTS's command and conquer has a tech tree a technology tree so to speak if you notice we have some structures that are lit which are what we can build and a bunch that are grayed out if we hover over let's say the war factory the war factory requires a power plant and a refinery a war factory and thanks to command and conquer 3 they have little tool tips this says exactly what it does it's a production structure deploys GDI vehicles it has also an ability which repairs nearby vehicles that's not too important right now right now we need to get our economy started the first Building. thing we're gonna build is this power plant and by clicking on it we're queuing up a build see how it dials down the money that it requires which is 800 it takes eight seconds it's a tech structure and provides power right here is a little number if you didn't notice this is our amount of money or credits each game has their own way of managing resources this is just credits okay the power plant is now built and ready to be deployed thanks to our construction yard if we click it we'll get a little template that shows where we can place it the large ring on the outside if you can see it is our range if I put the power plant out of the range it's red cannot deploy here. and I get a message of cannot deploy here if I bring it in closer to the ring New and click again options. our power plant is online and if you noticed we now have access to a barracks a barracks allows us to train GDI infantry which is the first component of war we're gonna first of all maximize our economy piece and we're gonna build a refinery again it's a resource structure and it comes with a harvester to allow the gathering of resources processes and stores Tiberium Enemy unit sighted. we're gonna go ahead and get that built and it looks like our we're already under, under attack. attack so under our support structure tab we're gonna build what's called a watchtower it provides mm -hmm. base defense I know I'm taking a little bit of time here but we're gonna click on okay. our radar or our repair and we're gonna repair our MCV they're attacking complete. with a lot of light infantry which does not deal a lot of damage our watchtower is a good base defense strong against infantry we're gonna click that again we need to make sure it's within the ring range we're gonna place that we're gonna build another one by making sure our structure is repaired 
we're going to click on the repair mode and click on that again. Complete. Let's place another watchtower. Should make very quick work of those infantry. Now, under normal circumstances, we would be moving much, much faster. But again, I want to take time with this. Our refinery is now built and ready to be placed. We're going to click and we're going to deploy it somewhere again within the ring. Since it uses the Tiberium here as resource, we're going to hold the left mouse button and we can actually orient the way it's facing. We want this face as close to the Tiberium as possible. When we click it and place it, the refinery is constructed and a harvester comes with to start reclaiming some of this Tiberium. When the harvester okay, is full of now. resource, it'll come back to the refinery and process the credits. Okay. We're going to force it now so I can demonstrate this at half full. You can see in the upper right our money value is starting to grow. This is how you maintain an economy in Command & Conquer 3. Enough refineries, enough harvesters, and enough Tiberium to keep your economy going. Now that we're actually getting some money, we're going to start building some other structures. How about a barracks right off the bat? We know our enemy at least has a barracks because they've already attacked us. Complete. Again, same thing. We click on it, the structure is built. We place it by holding down the mouse button if we want to orient it, and then just let go. Options. Now that we've built a barracks, we have another tab called the Infantry tab. Here we can start training some troops. And here again with the tooltips it makes it really nice. The Rifleman Squad is a basic machine gun infantry strong versus other infantry. The Missile Squad Infantry has rockets, strong versus vehicle and aircraft, and the Engineer is a utility. Is the Engineer allows you to capture enemy structures. It looks like we're under attack again, so we're going to train a couple of Rifleman Squads, and we're going to build another Watchtower. Rifle squad ready. Unit under attack. Engage. We're going to go through this combat real quick, and then I'll start really explaining how tactics work with these Rifle units. Squad ready. So we've been attacked. Our guard towers, or our support structures, automatically attack. They're consistently looking for enemy activity, attacking anyone who comes near. Okay? Now, we've got a bit of an army of our own. By highlighting them, we get a readout of what units are in our selection. In this case, we see five rifleman squads with a green bar under that also corresponds to the green bar on top of how much health they have. Let's just look in here a little bit. Okay? When they run out of health, the unit dies. So it's important to try to utilize that idea. If you have injured units, keep them to the back. If you have units with full health, move them up to the front. Okay, now that we have a force, we're going to add these guys to a control group. By holding the control uh, key and a n hitting a number, like the number one, you might see now that they have a number one in the upper left-hand corner. That's really hard to see, so you have to take my word on it. The benefit of adding these guys to a control group is all I ever have to do is if I want to talk to these guys again or give them yes, a sir. move order or an attack order, I don't have to find them Squad again. Ready. All I have to do is hit the number one and it automatically selects what I designated as Silos the first unit. army. Okay. Now, we've gone through some unit construction. Let's actually build a couple of Can missile you? squads since we want something strong against vehicles as well. Now, back to our base. With all these structures that we've been building, we've opened up new structures. We now have access to the weapons factory because we've built a power plant and a refinery, which was a requirement. Okay? If we select some of these other... Oh, we're under attack again. So let's highlight our army because now we've got some new additions. Let's go check it out. Oh, they're running through the Tiberium. That's not a good choice for infantry. They're going to take damage. Let's get another watchtower up. The enemy is a Keep bit smart in this game. They'll try to find path of least resistance to try to get to some of our resources. We quickly wipe them out because we've got a good amount of units on our side. Now, since we're getting attacked from different angles, I'm going to put a watchtower over here. Oh, we've run out of power. Now, that's a component I haven't talked about yet. See this red flashing light? It's designating that we're low on energy. We need to build another power plant. That's the purpose of the power plants. They make sure that our radar stays up, and we lost our radar because now we don't see the minimap anymore. Our unit defense, or our base defense, is targeted black. That means it's offline. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build another power plant. The watchtowers are not black anymore, and we have our map back. Okay? Now, we have the, the very basics of gaining resources and spending resources. 
we're sitting on a bunch of cash still. So now it's time to keep moving up the tech tree. The enemy's just been throwing infantry at us, enemy and we've stopped sighted. them cold every single time because they haven't moved up their tech tree at all. Look at here's another squad of infantry that'll just get picked off by our watchtowers. Our base is under attack. Unit Let's go under ahead attack. and repair our watchtower because they're bringing missile troopers in. They're dealing more damage against structures and vehicles. Still no problem. Make sure your structures are repaired at all times if possible. But right now we've got a nice little harvesting operation. Still, we need to pose a threat to the enemy and we haven't done that yet. So now let's keep teching up the tree. Next is a war factory and then we'll also build a command post because those are required for a tech center, a space command uplink, and an airfield. This allows us to build infantry from the barracks, vehicles from the war factory, aircraft from the airfield, and other supportive technologies from the other structures. Construction complete. Here's my war factory. Construction now options. it opens up a new tab for vehicles. Here we have the more heavy machines of war. We have a pit bull. It's very light. It's quick. It's a scout. Strong versus aircraft. We have a predator tank which is strong versus vehicles and structures. We have an APC, which is a transit vehicle, good against infantry and aircraft. We have a Enemy harvester, which does exactly what this harvester does. And we have an MCV, which we had before, before it turned into a construction attack. yard. That'll allow us to expand our base. Repairing. Let's just make sure that watchtower is repaired. The big wrench icon designates that it's currently repairing. repairing. Okay. So, Let's build a few more harvesters, Training. considering there's a bit of a gap in between the harvester being out in the field and the refinery accepting cargo. So the idea really is you want your refinery to be processing cargo at all times. See, right now we could have another harvester dumping off. When we built the harvester, it comes out of the war factory, and the harvester already has an inkling to go find the nearest Tiberium and start processing. Okay? So now, when this harvester is full, it'll go back to the refinery. This one will still be in the field harvesting, and it'll cycle and will gain credits much faster. This is the main component to building a rich economy. Hope I haven't lost you so far. Good. Now that we have an economy, we're reaching a limit here in Command & Conquer 3 known as silo space. Since Tiberium is a very toxic component, we need to make sure it's properly stored. When we run out of silo space, we'll stop Enemy accepting shipments. Silos needed. There. The designation or the notification of Our silos needed attack. means we're not accepting Unit any more attack. Tiberium loads. Let me just take care of this army real quick. Our watchtowers are going to just doing a great job here. Check for repairs, make sure everything's okay. Again, a full green bar means it's full of health. Now, silos needed. That means we have Tiberium that's waiting to be processed, but we can't process it. We have no place to store it. You can do two things about this. You can either build silos, which will store more Tiberium, which Building. we will do for me to demonstrate this purpose. Construction complete. We'll just place this here. Our maximum is increased, and now we're accepting Tiberium again. Our credits are growing. The limit will be reached again fairly soon, because this doesn't like triple or double or anything. It adds, I believe, 2,000 more storage. So once this fills up again, we'll get the notification, silos required, and then we're stuck. The other thing you can do when you have a ton of cash, and I recommend this Enemy very much, is you start building more weapons of war, in this case vehicles, infantry, and aircraft. Our in order to build... Oh, let's take care of this real Unit quick. Unit lost. Stay together now. Silos needed. Yeah, so silos are needed. Our ready. army's starting to get dwindled down a bit, so it's time to start refreshing our army. Training. Let's get three rifleman squads, or four. Let's get two more missile squads. Squad and let's get some vehicles. Training. How about some predator tanks for anti-vehicle? Let's get some pit bulls in case they build aircraft, and a couple Rifle of APCs. Now, if you saw me build all these units, this is a Q order. My first order of four Predator tanks will finish first, then my Pit combat. Bulls, and then my APCs. This is important. Missile they don't all build at the same combat. time, but they do in some predator other real-time strategy games. 
We hear you. Now we have more of a force. What we're going to do is we're going to hold shift and hit the number one because that was the designation of our other army to include them. Then out. control and one, and now this is all group one. Okay, now our army is getting a bit bigger. We're spending our money. People We're still harvesting resources. This is a good mix. Okay, they just bombed our power plant. Structures damaged. Let's go ahead and repair our structures, make sure that they're fully functional. If we lose that power plant, we'll go ABC offline. Ready for combat. Now, we have some good vehicles and some infantry, so let's keep going up our tech tree. The next is a command post. This unlocks a lot more tech for us and some command abilities. Again, we're just going to move these vehicles over to the right. Shift 1, Control 1. They're now all part of the group. Okay? Now, in Command & Conquer 3 and 18, you can do is if you hold both the left and the right mouse down and drag, you can kind of give a formation order. So we're going to do this right here. Instead of everyone being jumbled, it attempts to put some of the vehicles in front, the infantry in back. Since the vehicles can take more damage than the infantry, this gives our infantry a bit of a shield. Okay? Let's go ahead and place our command post. And look at our power bar is getting really close. We're going to need another power plant. So let's get that queued up. What sneaky bugger thought you could go the long way, huh? Our under Just keep that watchtower repaired. Complete. Now this, this tactic that I'm really showing you, again, still very introductory, is really only good against the easy enemy. You can't do this sort of slow-paced build-up against a hard, or a brutal for that matter. Again, let's just make sure everything is repaired. Very good. We're going to place our power plant right about here. And we're going to expand with another watchtower, since they could easily sweep in and deal some damage. Now, if we hover over the mouse, or hover the mouse over the power bar, we see our production and consumption. The uh, construction yard early on does provide some power and these three power plants. We're going to talk about upgrades now. Because we built our command post, which I have highlighted here, it granted the ability for our power plants to upgrade. Oh, actually, we need a tech center. I take that back. I thought it was just a radar. That must have been changed in one of the upgrades. So, with that, we can see, uh, let's just hover this over proper, increases the power output of this power plant. It's grayed out because we need a tech center. So let's go ahead and build a tech center. Again, we have a huge listing of stuff that the tech center provides, but I don't want to worry you too much over that. But because we built a command post, we can also build anti-air, an AA battery. This allows us to shoot down okay. aircraft. As we really go through some of these units, you can kind of detect there's a real rock-paper-scissors methodology to this kind of a game and complete. most real-time uh, real strategy games. Building. For in this case, this structure, the watchtower we've built, is only really good Enemy against infantry. Excited. We have another one called the Guardian Cannon, which is only complete. really good against vehicles. And this AA battery for anti-aircraft is, again, oh, only really good under. against aircraft. Man, I'm really thankful we built that watchtower down here. A couple of vehicles, if they brought it in, we'd be in a real world of hurt. But that's why we built our army, so we'd have something available. Again, the big neon wrench signifies that the structure is being repaired. I should have also explained this. When you repair your structures, if you look in our money, 8746, Repairing. it goes down. So it went down $16 to repair that structure. We're going to place this tech center right here, and we've gone out of power again. Now, instead of also building another power plant, we can also use this icon here, power mode, which I didn't explain earlier. What this does, if you click on a structure, it powers down one building so the rest of the grid can come back online. Again, if everything's online, as in drawing power, nothing is online. If one structure takes down the grid, everything's gone. If we power down this structure ourselves, the grid still stays up, and that's a very important concept, especially if you're on the defensive. Now, like I said, we now have our advanced turbines upgrade. To the right, you see it says Control A. That's the key we can hit if we want on the keyboard instead of clicking the button. I've now given orders for these three power plants to upgrade. We were producing 70 energy. Now we're producing 110, 100. Very good. So now we can repower on our anti-aircraft tower. Okay? 
Loaded and ready. I thought I just heard an airstrike incoming. Our <clears throat> is under just more infantry. Let's go ahead and keep that repaired. See, now they're bringing in more force. They're starting to push a little bit more. So we're going to add a few more watchtowers to our defense. I did hear an airstrike. There it is. Again, make sure our structures are repaired. And it looks like they took down our watchtower. So we're going to go ahead and build one or two more. We could use our army, but I still want to keep this from a defensive perspective using these turrets. There we go. No problem. Okay. Now, as we've gone through an upgrade with our power plant, there's other upgrades we can do, and some of these tech structures allow for it. So, from our tech center, we get some new upgrades. We're not going to worry about them, but just so you know, they're there. Upgrades usually boost the effectiveness of structures, vehicles, infantry, or they allow for better, faster production of something. Those are usually what upgrades are. They come at a cost. In this case, the mortar upgrade gives pit bulls long range mortars in addition to the regular weapon. Again, they have a cost and a time, and in 30 seconds and $2,000, that'll be complete. Our units will automatically be retrofitted with them, or fitted with them, I should say. Okay? That's the basics of that. Now, let's go up our tech tree and let's build an Building. airfield. Aircraft act differently in almost every single real-time strategy game I've ever played. This one's no exception. Construction complete. Let's go ahead and throw this somewhere. It's Upgrade a little complete. more defended. How about right there? Construction options. Okay, cool. It also opened up another tab for aircraft. Uh, traditionally, you get fighters and bombers. Those are the two real types. Um, what fighters are good for, in this case, we have an orca. It's actually kind of a bomber. It's not really a fighter either. Um, a fighter four. plane is good at Security dealing area. with other aircraft. A, a bomber aircraft is good for taking a bunch of bombs, flying over the enemy base, dropping those bombs, flying back. So good for structure damage. In this case, let's just queue up a couple of Firehawks. Firehawks are my favorite aircraft in this game, bar none. Okay? Now, we can keep building more weapons of war. We have now opened up a rig. We're not going to talk too much about that. But the GDI Firehawk, signature Dr. Mammoth Tank, Training. which is a... a I mean, it's a mammoth tank. I don't know how else to explain that. And a juggernaut, which is a heavy artillery unit. With the building of our other structures as well, we've also opened up the Grenadier Squad. Uh, they're Fire guys off. with Dark explosives. Array. Zone Troopers. We also have options for a sniper team and a commando if we built an armory structure. So let's go ahead and build that. Building. Mammoth tank assembled. Now, we've got more than enough Fire stuff to run over the away. enemy. We've taken a good amount of time being lax and relaxing and complete. trying to just get stuff slapped together. But let's go ahead and build up this armory. New the ar options. armory is allowed for, oh my gosh, bunches of cool stuff. You can heal Fire. injured heal troops. Right. Okay. And you get some other units and such. Now, we've exhausted our Tiberium field. Based on the Man, rules of Command & Conquer 3, this is a... I believe it's called a Tiberium node, and this will spawn off little Tiberium chunks, but this isn't com isn't going to provide a lot of money for us. Harvester's under attack. That's a very important message to pay attention to. And it looks like they're actually bringing tanks to the party. It's very important you defend your economic line, especially these Harvesters. They have a very, very tiny, weak machine gun. So I'm just going to move them here until I can deal with them in a second. Here's our mammoth tanks that have just come off the assembly line and they'll do some real quick work. In addition to our army, I moved over to help deal with these predator tanks. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move these guys in formation right about here. We have a couple of harvesters that are damaged, so if you remember before, probably not, but that's okay, our war factory has the capability of repairing units. All we have to do is move them within this little circle here, and the units will automatically be repaired. This kind of repair for a vehicle is absolutely free, so it's really important we make sure we don't lose these things. These harvesters are absolute lifeblood. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to take our yes, whole force, we're going to move it right about here to make sure our harvesters can get close enough to a different kind of Tiberium, which is Blue Tiberium. Blue Tiberium is a little more volatile, and it's worth twice as much as Green Tiberium. So it's very worth it to catch that yes, early sir. on in a game if you can. 
What we can also do is we can expand our base. But for right now, I think for just for this, we're just going to keep it pretty light. Give him the attack order, and the attack order for a harvester really is to harvest the resources. Commander, take him out. Under attack. Unrivaled. Stay on him. Yes, sir. We're going to give our units an attack order. Make sure they're dealing with this threat. Very good. Move back into formation. Again, we're treating this fairly lazily, but that's okay. Now, you might have noticed a bunch of blue icons on the left. This is something that's uh, very distinct to Command & Conquer 3. These are called, I believe, command abilities or powers. I think powers is the right word. For a certain cost, you can invoke a certain action. In this case, we have a radar scan, which shows off part of the map. We can summon some sharpshooter teams, which are snipers. We can call it an orca strike. Orcas are those kind of fighter bombers I mentioned earlier, those aircraft. We can also summon a bloodhound battalion, which will bring in some pit bulls and APCs, and also the GDI airborne squad, which will give us some veteran riflemen and missile squads. For giggles, we're going to use our radar scan ability against the enemy, and we're going to see what they've all got. They have a fairly comprehensive base. No defensive structures I'm noticing, but a full base nonetheless. Power plants, radar, vehicle and infantry construction, high tech because they do have a tech center. So they're very, uh, they're very high in the tech tree. That's an important thing to know when you're sizing up your opponent. How high in the tech tree are they? Okay. Now that we're thinking a bit ahead and it's starting, you know, we've been attacked and it's good that we're really trying to think ahead. We're kind of low on our surplus energy production. So we're going to build a power plant. We're going to build another watchtower. Or we could build a guardian cannon. Or since we're up the tech tree enough, we could be a, build a sonic emitter. This is advanced base defenses. It's more expensive. It takes longer to build, but it's very effective against vehicles. We're under attack. Let's go see what's going on. Our army is under assault. We're going to go ahead and give attack orders. Again, I'm hitting one. And in this case, I'm right clicking on the enemy. Now you see I have a red reticle right there. Now I have a green. That's the difference between a move and an attack. Yes, sir. Right now it's a move order. Construction In this case we're doing formation, but when you're targeting an enemy unit it'll change red. So let's go ahead and build up this power Cannot plant because we need it. We're gonna go ahead and upgrade the turbines. And let's build a sonic emitter. These things are amazing base defense. Really great against heavy vehicles. Okay? So we talked about powers basic resource collection spending that sort of a thing now let's talk about super weapons Building. almost every rts i think Enemy i've ever played has oh looks like we're under attack again they really like that power plant let's go ahead and repair that stuff anyway back to my train of thought you jerks almost every single rts game i've ever played has uh, affectionately called super weapons Think of like nuclear weapons or satellites that shoot lasers from the heavens, that kind of stuff. What the Global Defense Initiative has at their disposal is called the Ion Cannon Control Center. This is what allows us to employ our super weapon, the Ion Cannon. I'm going to wait for another, what, 10 seconds until it's built. Um, as we're looking at it, you can see how much money, time, and power it requires. So it requires 20 power. We know we have more than 20 power, so we can place this safely. Construction complete. Unit under attack. I just placed it. In the upper left, hang on, let's take care of this attack yes, real quick. Sir. Mammoth tank ready. Mammoth tank. Let's get you guys in formation again. Good. Now. In the upper left, you can see there's a timer. I have it highlighted. It starts at seven minutes. In seven minutes, now six minutes and 35 seconds, I can use this ion cannon free of charge. We built the facility, now I can just use it. It's a devastating weapon, it's crazy. Do not ever let your opponent get a super weapon online. It will spell disaster for your base. We're kind of low on power Building. again. Let's build another power Silos plant. Needed. Silos are needed again which is fine by me. Now, in reality, complete. if you're trying to play against an opponent, Building. the biggest thing you need to worry about is having too much money. Now, that might sound dumb, but hear me out. The only way to win an RTS complete. is through military might, at least Command & Conquer. In other games, like I said, the, 
the definition of victory is different. In this case, it's military might. We need to make sure that we beat the opponent and decimate everything they have. In that case, sitting on a ton of cash and not building Training. units is a mortal sin. Absolutely a mortal sin. So we're Training. gonna build a bunch of zone troopers, missile squads, even if you don't know what these units do. Again, they have the nice tool tips. You can read what they do and what they're good for. And that'll at least start producing units. We'll start to spend down our money, and now we'll have more of an army. That's really important. Okay? Good. Now, we have these Firehawks we haven't used at all. So let's go ahead and have some fun with these guys. Give you guys a move order out here. What they'll do is they'll go to the area and they'll float around a little bit. When they quote-unquote run out of fuel, or I think really a timer's reach, they'll come back to base. Because they're air units, we don't have to worry about the ground. They can move very quickly, and these are used to employ hit-and-run tactics. So we're going to go to the enemy base, we're going to find a structure, we're going to attack it, and we're going to run away. Perfect. We dealt enough damage, the structure is destroyed. They were shot at from the missile squads, because the missile squads can actually shoot at the, at the air. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Come back home. When the airfield comes, or when the air units come back home, I don't know if you can see, but they have little black dimples up under their life. That's an ammo indicator. So right now they have no ammo. They just dropped off their bombs. Let's scroll in again. After a while, they'll recharge. As you can see, right about now, there we go. All our bombers are refitted, and they're ready to go out again. So let's send them out for one more run. Air units are absolutely amazing, especially if the enemy's not ready for it. Hit the thrusters. Enemy unit sighted. Roger that command. Unit under attack. Send the units out. Let's attack the barracks this time. Enemy base sighted. All the bombs are dropped. They come back home. Pretty straightforward stuff. We're going to use our radar scan ability again. There we go. So now they have an air force. We can kind of get a better idea of what they're building and what they're going to attack with. Okay? So, like I said, now that we're running low on cash, or running down our money, because we keep building a bigger and bigger army. Even if you're trying to learn a real-time strategy game that you've never played before, a lot of these core concepts still hold true. There's some form of an economy that you need to protect. There's some sort of a tech tree that you get more and more advanced units depending on what you build and how you build it. That sort of a thing. New tech, new units, new research, Silence. new abilities. Each game has different verbiage for all of these Firehawk, things, but they all really by, mean the same thing. By. Okay. Now that we've left this Tiberium alone long enough, it's really regrown. So instead of... You guys love that power plant. I'm just going to keep repairing it, so I have no problem with that. <laughs> anyway, now this Tiberium patch has really regrown. We can tell these guys that are harvesting the blue stuff to stay put. But this allows us to build up like a piggy bank, so to speak, for later on. It's a good idea. Okay? Now, we're still sitting on a ton of cash. Let's go through and do some researches. Railgun upgrades gives our Predator and Mammoth tanks railguns, which is a nice upgrade. Again, it says also increases attack damage. Stratofighter upgrade allows our Firehawks to quickly teleport around the battlefield. That's awesome. Sensor pod upgrades gives our Orcas ability to launch sensor pods. Again, if you don't understand this stuff, that's totally fine. But each game, like especially with the Command & Conquer uh, franchise, has this sort of a thing. Command & Conquer Generals, CNC3 are two real key indicators of this sort of research and upgrade. So we're sitting on the cash, I just want the upgrades right now, not too worried about what things do or how they happen. Okay? Very good. Now, we have our quite large army, we're going to start building more stuff. More mammoth tanks, more predator tanks. And the important thing here, again, like I said before, is a real rock, paper, scissors idea. We're building a lot of tanks. Tanks are strong against other vehicles and structures that are not great against infantry. So we might want something that can deal with infantry. APCs are strong against infantry. That being said, we also need something that deals with aircraft. The APCs can deal with aircraft, but pit bulls do a better job. The point I'm trying to make here is if you just build all of one unit, you can get into a bit of trouble. It gets to be a dangerous situation because if, let's say we built nothing but tanks. 
and the enemy built nothing but rocket infantry, we would lose if we're not careful because their Honestly, units are strong against our units. Okay. Enough jibber jabber, I think. Let's get our army on the move. Firehawk standing by. Now, what we have here are structures that are not part of the enemy base. These are called civilian structures. They can be captured with an engineer and provide certain benefits. In this case, this is a large rail defensive tower. It's exactly what it says. It's like the towers we've built for our base defense. This is an EMP station. What this does is it allows you to use an EMP, which is an electromagnetic pulse, that disables enemy structures. Awesome, especially when you're on the attack. Uh, in the lower right, we also have two other kinds of civilian structures. We have a Tiberium Spike, which will give you a few credits every so often. So it's like a free money maker. And this is a Mutant Hovel. It allows you to train special mutant units. In the center here, we have a Control Pod, I believe it's called. Let's move up to it. What it does is it allows you to build within a certain area around it. It's very nice. Okay. This Motor's blue ready. stuff is running out. Let's get our harvesters back and tell them to start harvesting green yes, stuff sir. instead. Approaching Tiberium. There we go. Now we can maintain our income. This is a expansion point. Okay. Now we know where the enemy base is. We're going to take our Never forces take and we're going to move them right outside because our There's ion cool. cannon is ready. And I want to show you this thing. Certain command abilities, or powers, I should say, and hang on, let me demonstrate this a little bit better. Cancel. I'm going to cancel what I'm building so you do a better job explaining. Certain Select powers target. cannot be used unless you can see the area. As you can see, this one is red. I'm unable to control these units at this location and drop them off because I can't see what's going on. Over here, I do have visual sighting, and I can drop these units off. Super weapons do not have this Select restraint, or constraint, I should say. You see how big this radius is? Everything in that pile is going to go away. Now, knowing what we needed in our tech tree to really become a threat, it's important to understand what we want to take away from the enemy. In this case, their power plants will cripple the rest of their base defenses. If we knock out their airport, they won't be able to produce units. If we take out their defensive structures directly, well, we won't have to deal with them. What I usually do is I do a radar scan so I can see the full enemy base, and it looks like they've rebuilt a few things. They rebuilt a barracks which isn't that big of a deal. But we're going to use our mighty super weapon, our ion cannon, take out these three power plants and their armory. So check this thing out. Ion cannon activated. Isn't that just awesome? It's a satellite that shoots lasers and it costs me nothing. We can now see they are Our underpowered under because attack. their structures are blackened. Not too sure what happened here. Looks like they tried to send Repairing. an aircraft. Let's repair our stuff. Silos, needed. Silos are needed again. Go figure. That's fine by me. Because now we're going to move in with our army. Ready we here. have everything highlighted as one. Again, if we're not attacking yes, something, sir. we're giving it a move Man, order, man, which man, tells man. all the units to move up. If we highlight an enemy structure, it turns man, red, man. and all of our units will actively open fire on the structure. Now we have a lot of high-tech stuff, so this move is going to be really quick to do. Like I said, whenever I really wanted to learn a new real-time strategy game, what I'll do 9 times out of 10 is just do a skirmish on easy mode. And I'll really start to learn how the game plays out. Let's concentrate on power plants, keeping the base offline, and then we can start picking them apart with that construction yard being the most important. Now they are unable to produce any more structures. All we have to do is go through the rest of the base and attack it directly. Our units will also automatically fire on enemy units. Oh, look at that. Victorious. Excellent. The rules of victory, like I said in this one, is destroy everything. There are also short rules. In this case, all you really have to do is destroy all structures, MCVs, and anything that can really build buildings. We did that, and that called it victory. Now for Command & Conquer 3 we have a results screen. This has the duration of the battle, how many units were created, structures were created, 
how many were lost, what your favorite unit was, that sort of a thing. So it's a nice little analytical thing if you ever wanted to say, oh, my, my favorite unit, apparently I built the most, rifleman squads. Um, this also has a breakdown of kill-death ratio, which means how many of their units did I kill before I lost one. What this really means here, let's just highlight this one direct, uh, let's do it like this. This means every single unit of mine killed 7.3 units of theirs. Same thing with the balanced here. They needed, so every one of their guys only killed 0.13 of mine. So it's not even a one-to-one. -one. So that's terrible from their side. But again, it was they were easy, not that big of a deal. And then, of course, this has also economic breakdown, average income per minute, resources gathered in total. Not too shabby for going up against an easy. Anyway, to summarize, I really hope this gives you an idea of how real-time strategy games can be learned, digested, broken down. The main components. You have an economy, a way to produce money to fuel your war machine, which is producing military units. You also have each faction or each side which has its own strengths and weaknesses as then of course back to the rock paper scissors idea one unit is always stronger than another which is stronger than another which is stronger than another which is stronger than another over and over and over and over again and learning that ebb and flow of how that works teaches you how to be a good commander and how to deal with situations when you're up against overwhelming force I hope you enjoyed this session. I know it was a little long, but I always enjoy teaching where I can, and I hope I've really opened your eyes to the real RTS genre. We can do any game you'd like. I can easily do a tutorial, but this is one I thought was really easy to pick up on. Have any feedback? Have anything you want to see? Let me know. Thanks for watching. John Megacycle, and I'm going to catch you guys next time.